everybody out there, you tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your identity to the masses? Hi, my name is Matt Yang King, the voice of uh, Tunnel Rat uh, on G.I. Joe Renegade. Come and on, thank you thing. for coming on to the show today. We were very excited to have well, you on. Well, thank you very much. And now for the listeners out there who might not be familiar with your work, could you describe some of the uh, characters that you portray? Uh, let's see, I'm Tunnel Rat on G.I. Joe, I'm Yamato in Super Ninjas, currently on Nickelodeon, um, I, for the old-timey gamer, I'm the voice of Illidan Demon Hunter for all of you WoW fans, uh, currently I have a commercial for World of Warcraft running where it's like, uh, Chuck Morris does not hunt, you know, that's me, and I'm the voice of all of the Call of Duty trailers. Very nice. I hear with commercials yeah. you get lots of residential tech, uh, checks. <laughs> uh, it's it's useful. Yeah, it's, it's it's helpful if you have two kids like I do. <laughs> well, I've heard I've heard stories of those checks, you know, being sent out, and they're only like ten cents. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a bar in Los Angeles called Residuals um, that if you can actually uh, bring in a check that's I think it's below thirty five cents, you get a free beer. That's cool, um, actually. Yeah. Why not? You know. I've never actually gone and cashed in any, but you know, I had a check on my wall for a while that was um, that was six cents, and uh, I had framed it and put it up on the wall just because I thought it was so obscenely funny. And then my wife looked at it one day and she said, "Why do you have an altar to getting paid crappy?" <laughs> well, that's a good question. <laughs> and I decided but- to uh, take it down at that point. Well, maybe one day you can just have a scrapbook of those sort of things. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> For the listeners out there who are familiar with how you became an actor, could you explain, you know, what sparked your interest? Um, originally, I started off as a concert violinist. That was my uh, my path. And uh, basically, I ended up doing a, a small show, and it, it piqued my interest, and, and the bug bit me, and I, I never looked back. And uh, ended up going to New York University for for acting. And then uh, outside of school, after I had left acting for a while, because I, I was school had sort of beaten the acting out of me, um, I went and I became a, a living student in a martial arts dojo for about a year and a half. And then it just it just kept on cropping back up, even while I was you know studying Zen and trying to concentrate on doing nothing but clean toilets and learn how to throw people. And uh, the first audition outside of me uh, getting outside of the dojo, I got on. I ended up on Broadway, and uh, did Broadway for about six months. Then ended up touring the country for about two years, and uh, then ended up out here and gradually worked my way through the ranks of uh, most of the television shows from 24 to ER to Frasier to Friends to West Wing. So, you know, and now I do a lot of voiceover as well. Well, I always hear that L.A. is a hard city to break into. Yes. I mean, in terms of L.A.'s growth, though, in the past few years, at least as a fan, it seems like video games are becoming all the rage. (laughs) Well, they are. I mean, video games, proportionately, a lot of people don't really understand how big video games are. And I think, actually, in a lot of ways, the acting community doesn't understand how big video games are. I mean, for for the last five years, maybe more, video games have outgrossed television and film combined. I mean, that's huge. I mean, the the, the, the fact and the fact that that these games are um, out there and they're absolutely ubiquitous and they're cross language and the amount of uh, influence that they have, uh, actually, even over our pop culture, is amazing and is amazing and, and they're still sort of sidelined. Um, but yeah, games, games are, are, um, I I am a gamer myself and, uh, and I love the fact that I've gotten to be in a lot of them. Oh, that must be really nice as a gamer to be able to say, look at me, I'm in this. (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah, it's very, it's funny. And and in certain ways, like I got to be the character of, uh, Constantine Baracchio in, uh, in Alpha Protocol. Um, and as an Asian actor in Hollywood, it's not very often that I get to play an 80s aficionado Russian psychopathic mobster. So, I mean, to be able to play that character and just to, to be able to drop into somebody so unlike myself, 
um, that never in a million years on camera would I ever be allowed to play um, was just incredibly nice. Well, it's sort of interesting that you mentioned that because I was listening to your demo and it sounded like you do the evil characters quite often. So you must be able I to do, get that I do. I do. There's just a lot of, de- of evil characters on my demo, but yeah, I've done uh, I've done a bunch of evil characters. I've also done a bunch of good guys as well. I'm, I'm I play a lot of the um, the supporting uh, sort of characters who can follow you around in Skyrim right now. Well, is there one that you prefer? Do you prefer being the the good, helpful guy, or do you prefer like you know yelling and killing minions and things like that? <laughs> oh no, 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 no! It's always more fun to be the bad guy. Oh, bad guys, bad guys infinitely get get more fun things to do. And you get to scream all the time. That must be the yeah, one not thing. Screaming is never, never. I mean, after having done all the Call of Duty games, screaming is not like the most like. Hey, that's the best. Because you know, anytime you get a scream for one second in any game, that means that it's uh, that you sat there and you screamed for hours in the room in order for them to get the right scream for the right time. It's not fun. Well, have you ever strained your voice or lost your voice from a war game? Uh, never lost it. Uh, strained it, definitely. Yeah, Call of Duty Call of Duty put a hurt down. Um, yeah, especially, I mean, because you look at an average uh, screenplay or an average teleplay, and you're talking about, you know, a line count that's, you know, you're talking about thousands of lines, maybe. Um if you're talking, uh, if you're talking a video game. You're talking about tens of thousands of lines, and to record, you know, if you're a lead character in one of those video games, recording uh, the shouting for every eventuality that you might have can can be vocally straining, even though they tend to pace it out over days. Definitely, I can see that. And so I, I have to wonder when you sit with your friends and you play play games like that, because those are usually multiplayer. Are you always are you always being like, hey, that was me? Just, just so you know. In a certain way, yeah, it depends. It depends on the game, but yeah, there, there are games that I've, that I've really noticed myself and sort of been very proud of it. Uh, I did uh, the Nickelodeon uh, Major League Baseball game, um, and they, they wanted me to do the character of Perch Perkins from SpongeBob. So I, I voice matched the the guy who who does do the the voice for for Perch Perkins, and then on top of that, they had had this concept that Perch Perkins uh, liked 1920s baseball games. So they had wanted me to call the game like a 1920s baseball announcer while doing an impression of of Perch Perkins, and that was just that was oodles of fun to do that, although that ended up being something on the order of like 35,000 lines. Oh, wow. So hopefully yeah. hopefully you got that really quickly then. <laughs> uh, well, you know, well, well it's a baseball game. You know. <laughs> well, in, in terms uh, of that, actually, do you go back and play a video game or watch something you've been in and do you think, oh, I could have done that better or that was perfect? Uh, no, I mean, the the glorious thing about about voiceover is you hear it in real time and and they can play it back you know instantaneously I mean, it's the benefits of modern technology so if i can really if i can hear it in the room i can usually go oh no 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 so you really get it you get a get a solid chance at, at putting something that you feel is perfect out into the air, which is really nice. I mean, how, how often do you get to, to have that much creative control over what you put out? Well, I actually do hear often that sometimes you'll do, you know, 20 takes of something, and they'll choose a take that necessarily a voice actor won't choose. Yeah, exactly. Well, but, you know, I'm, I'm notorious for um, going off script. So I, I love giving them as many options as possible, and, and that way I'm not just constrained by whatever their line is or whatever the, the read is. Um, so it, it, I've been nothing but happy with, which, uh, w- with what's been presented by my, of, of my work, at least on the VO side. Well, at least the directors must love that. <laughs> yeah. They and now- seem to have fun. Well, that's good. In, in terms of uh, directing, have you... Um, how how often do you rely on a director for a video game in comparison to say maybe animation or dubbing? Oh, the director is very important. I mean, and and the good directors are the ones who really know when to back off and just let you do your job, um, and the ones who really sort of get involved. In that. Jack Fletcher, who did all of the um, 
oh god, what is it called? Um, Valkyria Chronicles. Valkyria. He did Valkyria, but he also uh, did uh, Ghost in the Shell. Thank you. Ah yes. Um, and uh, Jack Fletcher is, is unreal when it comes to sort of knowing when to back off and knowing when to be involved. Uh, I did uh, the character of Deadpool um, from of comic book fame for him, and that was great because Deadpool is the only character who really gets to break the fourth wall. And, uh, you know, Jack just letting me sort of off leash and letting me go as far as the character would take me was, was uh, just as good a direction as when he would be like, no, 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 rein it in, try and do this, try and do this a little bit more. Well, that's kind of interesting that you mentioned him. I was actually having a talk with the staff. We we had sort of a roundtable the other night um, on one of the games he directed, and I and and it was one of the very first like PlayStation Two games that had full voice. It was Final Fantasy X. Right. And uh-huh. everyone's like, "Well, they directed that so bad." I'm like, "You're gonna call Jack Fletcher a bad director? Have you not played Valkyria Chronicles, Ninja Gaiden, yeah. or the past like five Final Fantasies?" Exactly. Yeah, Jack is Jack is quite renowned, and he uh, he started off doing a, a film that actually I have coming out this year called Back to the Sea, which is a 3D animated movie, and it's the first sort of big big box 3D animated movie that's going to be coming out of Chinese studios. Um, and uh, then it got sort of passed along to a bunch of other people, and it, it's sort of the first time I've ever seen. Um, the direction on a movie chain, and it, it'll be interesting to see what ends up still being Jack's influence, and other, other other folks' influence. Oh, that sounds really cool. Does that have any mm-hmm. sort of release window that we can look forward to? Uh, you can go to the Back to the Sea uh, movie website. Just type in Back to the Sea movie into Google, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. Awesome. We'll have to check that out. And actually, you can check that out now because we're going to go to a short break here on 91.8 The Fan. But don't go anywhere because my special guest isn't, unless we get disconnected. Probably that won't happen. Maybe. We'll see. (laughs) Keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't. Hi, I'm the Celtic Guardian, but you guys can call me Dave. When I'm not busy being sacrificed in order to summon monsters that are halfway useful, I like to listen to 918 The Fan. One of the hottest online radio shows on the worldwide internet highway. Thing, did I mention I have like 1,400 attack points? That's a big deal in my world, you know. Plus, I have a sword. Does the Blue Eyes White Dragon have a sword? No. Fuck the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Seriously. Hey, everybody out there. You're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and my special guest is still here. Are you? Maybe? I am. Ah, yes. He didn't die. We didn't hurt him, I promise. Gosh, you guys are so... You blame me all the time for these things. Ah. Anyway, (laughs) we were actually talking a little bit uh, behind the scenes about your role in Valkyria Chronicles, which is a pretty infamous PlayStation 3 game for a lot of anime fans out there. Did you get a chance to play that game yourself? Yes, I did. Uh, I'm I'm not the best at the turn-based games, uh, other than maybe chess. (laughs) <laughs> but but uh, I did I did play that and I did enjoy it. Now that was a really interesting game, and your your character was very interesting, just due to the fact that he was I, I don't want to say necessarily bloodthirsty, but he was very cold. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and and you know I sort of played him like my envisionment of what uh you know because because there was the sort of um, space British accent to him. Uh, I sort of played played him as my my version of the uh, of of uh, Alexander the Great. Oh, well, that actually makes a lot of sense. And considering he he had enough armor to be several kings. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And what, plus, what... I've watched a lot of anime, so it just it, it, you know it, it, it to me was a natural offshoot of of you know just watching Robotech in my childhood. Oh, that's actually really interesting. I, I mean, and once you saw the character and how kind of bulking big he is and the type of armor he has, I mean, yep. let's face it, white is easy to see a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> you probably exactly. got a feel for how his personality was. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jack was really, really good about sort of talking about how emotionless he was about certain things, what he's psychopathic about, what he actually did care about. And and, and he was very clear about uh, getting those things in line for that character. And now I believe that character actually appears in the second and third one as 
uh, as an extra character. I, I'm not sure the third one's getting a U.S. release, but were did you were you asked to record any other lines for the second one? I can't say. Oh, uh, <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> I know the third one's not released, but I, the right. second one, I know, I definitely know that one's out on PSP. But, yeah. But uh, I guess I guess we'll find out one day with snooping yeah. skills. <laughs> And hopefully we'll see the third one, and we'll see you in the third yeah. one. Oh, uh, perhaps. Perhaps. He's got a sniper to his head. You, you, he can't. Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. Now, now, for the listeners out there that really want to keep track of what you're doing, are there any projects that you're working on that you can talk about, or anything upcoming that you can pimp out to them? There are quite a few. Um, right now, let's see. Uh, I have a geeky podcast that anybody can listen to anytime called uh, geekson.com. Uh, that constantly runs, that basically talks everything from um, brain surgery to the newest Iron Man movie. We've interviewed everybody from George R. R. Martin to Joss Whedon to, to Christina Hendricks. Um, and uh, it, it's mostly like, people I meet in the industry, come over, let's chat for an hour and a half. Um, and we do a sort of uh, unusual interview format where basically a lot of them, uh, from me talking to them on set, are sick of talking about it, uh, of talking their junkets. So we get them on the show, and when we had Joss on the show, Joss had said to me that he was really, really sick and tired of talking about Buffy. So he came on the show, and we were like, what do you want to talk about? And he said, talk about AI for a couple hours. So we talked to Joss Whedon for two hours about AI. Um, and that tends to be the format for the show. Um, and uh, we, we, we roll that way. Other than that, I have a Sith Science Kid 3D movie coming out. Um, which is great because uh, they've uh, put an Asian character in there named Yang Yang. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, his name is Yang Yang. And then uh, I have the, the Back to the Sea movie coming out as well. Uh, hopefully we'll get a second season pickup for Super Ninjas. Uh, G.I. Joe Renegades is still running on the hub, although we are still officially, quote-unquote, on hiatus. Um, Rude is still running, but I don't think they're bringing that much character uh, this season. Oh, oh, shame. Oh. Uh, other than that, uh, I'll be developing a new series uh, with uh, Terrell Hunt, the creator of the webcomic Goblins, and we're going to uh, be trying to do an animated version of that. So keep an eye out and uh, keep a uh, look for our Kickstarter page. Ooh, very exciting. And for anything that you didn't mention that you can't talk about, uh, do you keep people updated anywhere, like your website, social media? Yeah, you can go to mattyangking.com, um, and uh, I, I up, update it pretty peri- periodically. Otherwise, uh, you can check out my uh, my Facebook page or the Geekson, uh, Geekson website at G-E-E-K-S-O-N.com. Well, I definitely say for the listeners to check that out because if you like us, you'll definitely like that. I gave that a listen, actually, yeah. uh, about thirty minutes before we got to talk. Oh, yes, and and now I get to continue it afterwards. So <laughs> I didn't I didn't get to finish the whole episode. I tried. We now, are silly geeks. Well, I you know geeks need to stick together. That's, that's why we have things that, like Comic Con. Whole job. Uh, absolutely, and it's funny because I've been going to Comic Con for a long time. And I've gone from watching panels to being on panels, and it's a very interesting thing. Well, do you have any events coming up where the listeners can stalk you in real life in a nice way? Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll have an invite to JoeCon uh, in New Orleans, um, but uh, I'm not sure whether or not that's going through yet. And we'll see. Other than right. that, I'll be at uh, I'll be at Comic Con this year, and uh, although I'm not sure which uh, panels I'm going to be on, or if I'm just going to be there doing press. Well, we'll definitely keep updated on that via Ah. your web zone. Excellent. And now we have a tradition here on 91.8 The Fan, and we were wondering if you'd be willing to participate. Sure. It's not painful. It depends on the tradition. It involves a a spanking paddle and mud. (laughs) I'm not into it. It's actually a little bit simpler than that. We just ask if you'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. Uh, Okay, sure. Absolutely. Awesome. The only trick is is that we do the takes live on air, so if you mess up, okay. everybody hears it. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> we basically ask if you w- you'd be willing to say, my name is, you insert your name, I do this, you can insert whatever you want there, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Are you writing it down? <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> I knew it. It's okay. You're not the first. All right. Excellent. Yeah, I can't. I got to have my lines out, man. <laughs> well, whenever you're ready, we can do a take one. All right. Hi, my name is Matt King. I do uh, Tunnel Rat on G.I. Joe Renegades, and you're tuned in to 91.8. Ah, damn it. Ah, uh, we got to get to take two. Let's try <laughs> Let's try one more time. Hi, <laughs> uh, my name is Matt Yang King. I do Tunnel Rat on G.I. Joe Renegades. You are tuned in to 91.8, the fan. Ah, see, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> oh. You survived. I did. Yes. And is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Uh, no, I'm all good in the hood. Oh, awesome. Well, they are very happy that you got to be on the show, and we're very happy that you got to be on the show. Excellent. Thank you so much. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and keep your ears tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.